Jasmine T. Doss Unsung Hero, The Story of Courage and Compassion is an engrossing documentary that follows the astonishing journey of a remarkable man whose actions of bravery and selflessness have left an indelible impact on history. Born into humble circumstances, this unsung warrior fought the odds to become a symbol of bravery and resilience in the face of adversity. This documentary delves into the untold story of a man whose unflinching faith and commitment to serve others went beyond the limits of heroism, from the battlefields of World War II to the depths of human sorrow. Through archival film, first-hand stories, and expert analysis, Unsung Hero illuminates the incredible life and legacy of a great American patriot whose name may not be well known, but whose impact will be felt for centuries. Join us on a journey of discovery as we learn the untold story of this unsung hero and celebrate the human spirit's ability to overcome even the most formidable obstacles. Corporal Desmond T. Doss, a tall and slender figure in Okinawa's harsh terrain, felt a wave of unease sweep over him as he watched the scenario develop in front of him. The conversation with Lieutenant Garanto had taken an unexpected turn, deviating from Doss's original proposal of personal prayer. Standing on the verge of an insurmountable mission, with a sheer cliff towering 400 feet above them, the gravity of the situation washed over his mind. In his heart, Doss had merely wanted to give his companions a moment of comfort before they launched on what promised to be a perilous attack. His faith in the power of prayer was very personal, providing him with courage and perseverance when faced with adversity. But now, as the gravity of their impending battle dawned on him, he couldn't shake the idea that his comments had been misread, perhaps even twisted, to serve an unintended goal. As the stress rose and the minutes passed, Doss struggled with a sense of obligation that threatened to overtake him. Had he unintentionally led his fellow soldiers into a dangerous situation? Was there still time to correct the mistake and ensure that each individual could engage in the calm contemplation he advocated? With a sorrowful heart, Doss retreated inward, seeking comfort in his own prayers as he prepared to face whatever challenges lie ahead. The cliff in front of them appeared insurmountable, but deep down, he believed that with faith and perseverance, they would find a way to climb it. On that April morning in 1945, the scene on Okinawa's shoreline was filled with tension and uncertainty. The 77th Division, led by Corporal Desmond T. Doss, had already been through severe combat in Guam and Leyte, but the obstacles on this new front were vastly different. The Japanese defenders had entrenched themselves throughout the island, making every inch of land a potential combat. From hardened bunkers to hidden artillery positions, they had transformed Okinawa into a fortress that appeared resistant to attack. The most formidable hurdle, however, was the Maeda Escarpment, a huge rock that slashed across the terrain like a jagged scar. Rising 400 feet above the ground, the escarpment formed a formidable barrier that seemed to defy all attempts at conquest. Its sheer face, rising sharply from the rocky landscape, appeared almost insurmountable, a towering testament to the enemy's defensive strength. Yet, concealed within its rocky embrace were a network of tunnels, caves, and gun emplacements, each with the ability to kill anyone who ventured to approach. For Doss and his colleagues, the order to attack the escarpment was both a frightening challenge and a cry to arms. Despite the turmoil and uncertainty of war, Doss maintained his steadfast faith, believing that prayer was their best chance of survival. Lieutenant Garanto expressed his conviction, advising his fellow soldiers to find peace and courage in prayer before beginning on the treacherous ascent. In the moments before the attack, as the sun rose high in the sky and the sound of combat rang in the distance, each soldier bowed his head in quiet prayer, drawing on reservoirs of courage and determination they had never idea they had. And when they marched into the enemy's walls, confronting seemingly insurmountable obstacles at every turn, they knew they weren't alone, that a greater power was watching over them, guiding their movements and giving them the fortitude to persist in the face of hardship. The pervasive presence of prayer in Corporal Desmond T. Doss' life should not have surprised anyone in his unit, it was as natural to him as the air he breathed. From the moment he stepped onto the military training grounds, it was clear that Doss was marching to a different beat, one led by his steadfast faith and unwavering commitment to prayer. Doss, a fervent Seventh-day Adventist, exemplified his faith in every part of his everyday life. 
As the sun fell below the horizon and his friends retired to their bunks for the night, Doss would kneel alongside his own, blocking out the noise and distractions of the barracks to communicate with his creator. Ignoring the jeers and jibes directed at him, he found refuge in solitary periods of introspection and supplication, seeking guidance and strength from a higher force. But prayer was simply one aspect of Doss' profoundly rooted spirituality. His treasured Bible, a gift from his beloved wife, acted as both a beacon of hope and a source of unyielding determination. He found wisdom and comfort in its pages, returning to them repeatedly for advice in the face of adversity. However, it was Doss' unwavering devotion of the Sabbath that truly distinguished him from his friends. Doss refused to work or train on Saturdays, the scheduled day of rest mandated by his faith. He stayed steadfast in his principles. Despite the ridicule and derision it frequently elicited from those around him. While he never hesitated to assist his fellow soldiers or attend to their medical needs, he refused to compromise his values, preferring to make up for missed time via persistent dedication and hard labor the rest of the week. However, Doss' unwavering adherence to his ideas widened the gap between him and his fellow soldiers. Taunts evolved to resentment, and disgust transformed into outright animosity as Doss became the subject of derision and abuse. Throughout it all, he stayed firm in his faith, deriving strength from his convictions and finding peace in the knowledge that he was walking the right road, regardless of the hurdles he encountered. When the time came for the men in Doss' training company to begin weaponry qualifications, he faced a critical decision, one that would mirror the strongly held principles that had guided him his entire life. Doss, steadfast in his dedication to his ideas, declined to participate. For him, the call to serve in the military was never about wielding destructive weapons, it was a sincere pledge to serve as a healer, tending to the wounded and alleviating suffering wherever he could. Doss was deeply influenced by a poster representing the biblical account of Cain and Abel, with Cain standing over his slain brother, since he was a child. The vision had burnt itself into his mind, instilling in him an unwavering vow and never to take another human life. It was a conviction born and not of fear or weakness, but of a genuine faith in the sanctity of life and the intrinsic worth of every person. As his comrades prepared to familiarize themselves with the tools of war, Doss remained solid in his denial. To him, the act of bearing arms was a betrayal of all he held dear, a betrayal of his faith, conscience, and the core of his personality. While some may have been influenced by the pressures of conformity or authority, Doss stayed steadfast in his commitment, refusing to sacrifice his values for the sake of expediency or convenience. For Doss, the decision to forego weapon training was more than just a personal preference. It was a moral duty, reflecting his strongly held belief in every human being's inherent worth and dignity. And, while his stance may have elicited ridicule and mistrust from others around him, he stayed solid in his conviction, believing that he was on the right track, regardless of the challenges he faced along the road. Dealing with a soldier like Desmond Doss, who stayed firm in his convictions despite the rigor of military protocol, posed a unique challenge for his commanding officer. Doss' unwillingness to conform to certain parts of military life, such as Saturday training, meat consumption, and weapon carrying, called into question the military's hierarchical structure and homogeneity. Doss' persistent dedication to his religious convictions was viewed by his superiors as a threat to the order and discipline that distinguished military life. His refusal to handle weapons or participate in activities that went against his conscience called into question the authority of his commanding commanders as well as the cohesion of his unit. Historically, the military had processes in place to deal with people who departed from the norm, frequently identifying them as mentally unfit for service and commencing paperwork to ease their departure. However, with DOS, things were not as simple. Despite his refusal to participate in certain military procedures, he remained profoundly devoted to serving his country and carrying out his responsibilities as a soldier in all other capacities. Doss' outstanding performance in all non-combat duties only emphasized the complexities of his case. He tackled his obligations with diligence and dedication, garnering the respect of both his colleagues and superiors. His refusal to compromise his ideals demonstrated unquestionable character and moral integrity, 
even in the face of opposition from those around him. When faced with the prospect of being discharged due to mental instability, Das refused to give in. He recognized the consequences of such a discharge, not just for himself, but also for the integrity of his principles. At his hearing, he eloquently argued his position, refusing to accept a release that would call into question his mental faculties or the sincerity of his religious beliefs. Finally, the military found itself in a dangerous position. They were unable to remove Das due to his exceptional conduct and steadfast commitment to duty, so they were forced to keep him on staff. Despite the problems his presence posed to the established order, Das boldness and integrity his relentless commitment to his principles eventually compelled the military to recognize and accept him for who he was, a soldier of conscience whose opinions were as firm as they were noble. When Das returned to his fellow soldiers, the mood around him remained tense and strained. His unwavering commitment to his ideas did not endear him to his companions, who regarded him with anger and contempt. Far from being relieved by the idea of keeping him in their ranks, they had a strong disdain for him, seeing him as a liability rather than an advantage. Point one especially nasty soldier went so far as to make a terrible promise to Das, pledging in all seriousness to commit suicide when the inevitable time of war arrived. Das took the threat seriously, knowing all too well the explosive nature of his fellow soldier's temperament and the very real risk he faced inside his own ranks. Despite the tangible anger aimed at him, Das remained steadfast in his dedication to his role as a medic. His first combat experience was on Guam, where he was plunged into the furnace of battle, surrounded by chaos and horror on all sides. Das began to test his mettle here, amid the loud noise of battle and the screams of the wounded, demonstrating courage and selflessness that belied his modest appearance. With unflinching determination, he faced enemy fire and risked his own lifetime and again to care for the injured and dying, going to any length to alleviate their pain and provide whatever solace he could among the horrors of war. His actions spoke loudly, garnering him the respect and admiration of people around him, even as they struggled with their own biases and preconceived notions. But Das' trial by fire wasn't over. The furnace of combat awaited him once more, this time on the island of Leyte, where the stakes were higher and the obstacles greater than ever before. As he prepared to face the horrors of war once more, Das found strength in knowing that he was serving a greater purpose, motivated by a feeling of duty and compassion that transcended the chaos and cruelty of the battlefield. Corporal Desmond T. Das repeatedly braved the line of fire on the battlegrounds of Leyte to attend to the injured, risking his life and limb to bring his colleagues to safety. His unshakable dedication to his role as a medic knew no limitations. He confronted the hazards of combat with courage and tenacity that astounded everyone around him. In one terrible episode that will go down in the annals of combat valor, Das found himself rushing into the open, oblivious to the torrent of enemy gunfire raining down around him, to treat and evacuate a wounded soldier. From a distance, his fellow soldiers watched in terror as a Japanese sniper took aim at the fearless medic, his rifle prepared to fire a fatal shot. Das remained unfazed despite being caught in the enemy's crosshairs, his focus constant as he treated to the injured guy with a steady hand and a calm manner. The risky scenario was exacerbated by the fact that returning fire was not an option. The sniper's location was cleverly placed so that any attempt to neutralize him risked endangering their own teammates. Das labored valiantly to stabilize the wounded man and transport him to safety, leaving his other soldiers in sheer astonishment, reluctant to act for fear of aggravating an already perilous situation. When he eventually returned to his position, his companions met him with relief and shock, unable to believe he had survived such a lethal encounter. One of the sergeants approached Das, his tone full of admiration and incredulity. Das, he said, we expected to see you slain any second that we couldn't shoot the sniper without endangering our own guys, and yet he had his machine gun pointed squarely at you. Didn't you see him? But Das' reaction was normally humble, and his attention had already shifted back to the task at hand. I was just doing my job, he said simply, his actions spoke louder than words could. Das prioritized his fellow troops' safety and well-being, and he would go to any length to ensure that they had the care and attention they required, even in the face of death. 
Corporal Desmond T. Doss' presence at the base of Okinawa's enormous Maeda escarpment appeared to embody a tremendous symbol of optimism and resilience for the soldiers of Company B. They gathered around him, captivated not just by his unflinching dedication to duty, but also by the strong faith that had led him through the trials of combat. In the quiet calm of that moment, with the cliff rising magnificently before them, Doss' colleagues struggled with a range of emotions, fear, doubt, and perhaps a glimmer of hope for in the midst of war's turmoil and devastation, Doss stood out as a beacon of courage and compassion, his unrelenting determination a monument to the tenacious spirit of the human soul. Armed with the comforting solace of his Bible rather than weapons of devastation, Doss had become a living example of faith's ability to maintain and uplift in times of adversity. His unwavering faith in the efficiency of prayer had become a source of strength and inspiration for others who had before questioned its effectiveness, instilling in them a renewed sense of hope and determination as they prepared to confront the challenges ahead. As they looked up at the sheer face of the Maeda escarpment, the severity of the task at hand became all too clear. However, in the presence of Doss, the men of Company B felt a sense of calm resolve, as if they had pulled strength from the depths of their souls. In that moment, they began to believe, not just in themselves, but in the power of something greater than themselves, something ethereal yet unmistakable that appeared to pervade the atmosphere around them. So, with Doss leading the way, the soldiers of Company B began their journey up the hazardous cliff, each step demonstrating their bravery and commitment, despite the danger and uncertainty of the route ahead, they persisted, bolstered by the medic's steadfast trust in the power of prayer. And as they went higher, they knew that no matter what hardships lied ahead, they would not be alone, for in the heart of Desmond T. Doss, the spirit of hope blazed bright, illuminating the path forward even in the darkest moments. Time to go, men, Lieutenant Garanto's voice broke the uncomfortable hush that had descended over the soldiers of Company B. For Corporal Desmond T. Doss, the time had come to put his faith into action again. With a final prayer mumbled under his breath, he placed their fate in the hands of a greater force, knowing that their success resided not in their own strength, but in the heavenly direction that would follow them on their deadly voyage. As they started up the steep incline of the Maeda escarpment, the soldiers of Company B confronted a tough struggle. The steep wall of the cliff loomed ominously before them, its rocky surface providing little relief from the scorching heat of the sun. With each step, they struggled against gravity's inexorable pull, their muscles trying to lift themselves up. Despite the challenges in their road, the guys persisted, motivated by a tremendous determination to overcome whatever obstacles remained between them and their goal. They climbed the last 50 feet of the cliff using navy cargo nets, getting closer to their goal with each passing instant, however, as they reached the summit, their triumph was fleeting. Company B was immediately bombarded with enemy fire, halting their movement with a constant onslaught of bullets and artillery rounds. To their left, Company A was engaged in a similar struggle, fighting desperately to secure their own sector of the escarpment. Casualties continued to rise, with the first five men dying as a result of the enemy's lethal accuracy. Despite their gallant attempts, Company A was unable to advance further, with their men devastated by the enemy's fierce resistance. During the commotion and confusion of battle, headquarters radioed Company B, requesting a report on their own casualties. To everyone's surprise, there had been none, there had been no deaths, and the only injuries were small wounds to one soldier's hand caused by a falling boulder. As the day progressed, the men of Company B battled with resolve verging on desperation, their every move motivated by the awareness that victory was in the balance. With unwavering determination, they raced across the escarpment, engaging the enemy in a furious battle that lasted until dusk. When the smoke cleared and the echoes of war faded into silence, Company B emerged victorious, completing their goal against all obstacles. It was a success beyond understanding, a testament to the human spirit's tenacity and resilience in the face of inconceivable hardship. I and the perspective of those who witnessed their remarkable victory, the men of Doss's company had accomplished the impossible, their courage and determination glowing as brightly as the sun as it fell below the horizon. The aftermath of Company B's spectacular assault on the Maeda escarpment left the military authorities perplexed and seeking solutions. How had they achieved such a remarkable win with no casualties? 
It was a question that rang from the front lines of Okinawa all the way back to Army headquarters in the United States, where officials sought to make sense of the seemingly impossible performance. In the days after the attack, a photographer arrived to chronicle the site of their victory, capturing the image of Lieutenant Garanto's order. Corporal Desmond T. Doss perched triumphantly atop the Maeda escarpment, a lone man against the backdrop of the huge battlefield. It was a moment in time that exemplified one man's courage and determination, as well as that of his comrades. As the investigation into Company B's extraordinary success progressed, the hunt for a rational explanation became futile. Despite intensive efforts to examine their plan and tactics, no feasible solution could be discovered. It was as if an unseen force had intervened, directing their path and protecting them from harm. Finally, with no other options available, the official investigation issued its conclusion, echoing the views of many who had observed the events firsthand, Doss prayed. It was a simple yet profound recognition of the strength of faith and belief in something higher than oneself, beliefs that had carried Doss and his companions through the darkest hours of battle. But, for Doss, the aftermath of the assault left him dealing not just with the physical pain of his injuries, but also with the loss of something far more valuable. As he lay on a medical ship off the shore of Okinawa, his body damaged and broken, his thoughts drifted to the one constant that had been with him throughout, his Bible. The Bible, a gift from his beloved wife, had provided him with courage and comfort throughout the trials and tragedies of war. It had been his buddy for months of training, during which he had faced derision and contempt from his fellow troops. It had been his guiding light during the wars on Guam, Leyte, and now Okinawa. However, as he reached for the familiar weight of the book in his shirt pocket, his heart dropped. The Bible was lost in the tumult and destruction of the Maeda escarpment, along with the blood that had stained his shattered body. In a moment of despair, he begged those around him to send a message to his men, please, tell them I've lost my Bible. That modest request encapsulated Desmond Doss' character, a man who, despite his own pain, stayed faithful in his commitment to his faith and duty. And, while the outward manifestation of his belief was lost, the indomitable spirit it symbolized blazed brilliantly within him, serving as a beacon of hope and inspiration to all who knew him. Almost a month had passed since that fateful, miracle morning, when Desmond Doss voiced his ardent prayers and Company B accomplished the almost impossible task of conquering the Maeda escarpment. In the ensuing weeks, Doss had been far from idle. Despite the early success of their attack, the Japanese forces ensconced within their rocky fortress were reluctant to give up control without a fight, and the subsequent fights were tenacious and brutal. The rocky terrain of the escarpment, covered with caves and tunnels, provided sufficient hiding places for the Germans, who would emerge under cover of darkness to launch surprise attacks on the surprised Americans fighting to keep their hold on the peak. It was a never-ending and brutal battle, with both sides vying for every inch of terrain. Despite the chaos and carnage of combat, Desmond Doss emerged as a beacon of courage and compassion, his actions speaking loudly about his unwavering dedication to his fellow troops. Only three days after the initial attack, he braved a storm of enemy rifle and mortar fire to run 200 yards front of the front lines, risking his own life to save a wounded colleague stranded in no man's land. But Doss' courage didn't stop there. Just two days later, when four soldiers were under heavy fire while storming an enemy gun installation, Doss sprung into action again, ignoring the deluge of enemy grenades that fell around him, he raced forward without hesitation, desperate to reach his fallen companions at any costs. As he approached the opening of the enemy cave from which his fellow troops had been killed by gunfire, Doss exhibited unprecedented bravery and selflessness by making four successive journeys under intense fire to rescue the wounded. With each daring voyage into the heart of danger, he sacrificed everything to save his friends, personifying the true spirit of heroism in the face of adversity. In the heat of combat, among the deafening sound of gunfire and the acrid stink of smoke, Desmond Doss stood out as a dazzling example of courage and compassion, a living witness to the tenacious spirit of the human soul. And as the battles raged around him, his unflinching resolve stood firm, a light of hope and inspiration for all who witnessed his amazing deeds of courage. On that fateful day, May 5, 1945, 
The winds of battle changed dangerously against the American forces stationed on the island of Okinawa. As enemy artillery, mortars, and machine gun fire rained down on them, the men of Company B, 77th Infantry Division, found themselves trapped in the deadly crossfire, their numbers devastated by the fury of the enemy attack. Japanese soldiers, emboldened by the turmoil and confusion of battle, emerged from their concealed foxholes and caves to start a relentless assault on the exhausted American forces. In the blink of an eye, the battlefield was transformed into a scene of devastation and anarchy, with death and destruction lurking around every corner. The toll of war was rapid and cruel, with a storm of bullets and a deafening roar of gunshots. Seventy-five men were wounded, their cries of pain and sorrow booming over the battlefield as they tried to find shelter from the lethal assault. Forced to retire under persistent enemy fire, the remaining troops of Company B had no alternative but to fall back and regroup at the base of the Maeda escarpment. As they sought refuge from the fury of combat, their dreams for victory dimmed, their ranks thinned, and their spirits rocked by the sheer ferocity of the enemy's attack. Despite the chaos and uncertainty of the retreat, one man stood firm and unshakable in his resolve. Desmond T. Doss stood alone atop the cliff, surrounded by the wounded and enemy forces closing in on him, like a beacon of hope in the midst of despair. Despite the overwhelming odds against him, Doss refused to surrender his station and his companions. With courage and resolve, he remained steadfast in his commitment to duty, risking his own life to tend to the wounded and provide whatever comfort he could in the middle of conflict. As the conflict raged around him, Doss' actions revealed much about his character and his steadfast loyalty to his fellow soldiers. Despite immense suffering, he remained a brilliant example of courage and compassion, a true hero in every sense of the word. Even though the tide of battle had turned against them that day, Desmond T. Doss' spirit remained unbroken, a monument to the human spirit's endurance in the face of incredible pain and misfortune. Despite the unrelenting barrage of enemy fire and the thunderous bursts of shells bursting all around him, Desmond T. Doss persisted in his duty to care for the wounded. With courage and determination, he went amid his injured companions onto the escarpment, unaware of the deadly perils that surrounded him. Meanwhile, at the base of the cliff, the few soldiers who had managed to avoid the enemy attack could only watch helplessly as the sounds of war rang down from above. Their hearts filled with dread and panic as they listened to the cries of the wounded, their lives hanging in the balance. Then, as if by miracle, a wounded soldier emerged over the escarpment, hanging perilously from a rope. Slowly and slowly, he descended to the safety of the base below, guided by the steady hands of a towering medic on the summit. More wounded troops followed suit, each one lowered to safety thanks to Desmond Doss' unrelenting commitment. With each action, he put his own life in danger to ensure his colleague's survival, his selflessness a light of hope in the middle of battle pandemonium. Reports from that fateful day described the advancing Japanese forces, their rifles and bayonets ready to strike at any moment as they closed in on the lone medic standing on the cliff. Despite the oncoming danger, Doss maintained his task with unrelenting determination, transporting the wounded to safety even as the Germans approached. Despite tremendous odds, Desmond Doss stayed steadfast in his dedication to his fellow troops, his heroism and compassion shining brightly in the darkest of times. And, as the threat of danger became closer, he refused to waver, his unflinching resolution a monument to the human spirit's strength in the face of difficulty. Desmond T. Doss' noble deeds on the Maeda escarpment that tragic day made an unforgettable mark in military history. As he worked relentlessly to lower soldier after soldier to safety, he exemplified the very definition of courage and sacrifice, his unshakable dedication to his fellow soldiers standing as a light of hope amidst the chaos and carnage of wartime. For five painful hours, Doss worked tirelessly, his every thought absorbed by a single, ardent prayer, Lord, let me obtain one more. Just one more. Despite the constant threat of enemy fire and the persistent risk of being overpowered by advancing Japanese forces, he refused to succumb to fear or despair, his faith in a higher power seeing him through the darkest of times. The gravity of Doss' deeds was beyond comprehension. Only God really knows how many lives he spared that day. 
Nonetheless, in honor of his amazing bravery, the army recognized him with saving an astonishing 100 lives, demonstrating the steadfast tenacity and selflessness that distinguished his character. But, true to his humble nature, Das couldn't believe such an astounding figure. Couldn't be, he said. It could not have been more than 50. I wouldn't have had enough time to save 100 men. So, in regard to Das' modest estimate, the Medal of Honor citation was prepared with a compromise in mind, crediting him with saving 75 fellow troops. However, regardless of the exact number, the significance of Das' actions on that fateful day cannot be emphasized. His heroic actions set a brilliant example of courage, compassion, and unshakable dedication to duty, a legacy that would last for centuries, encouraging many others to strive for greatness in the face of adversity. And, while the conflicts may have faded from memory and the wounds of war have healed, the memory of Desmond T. Doss' incredible heroism and altruism will live on as a monument to the eternal ability of the human spirit to overcome even the most formidable difficulties. As darkness set on the battlefield, a sense of wonder and adoration spread through the ranks of the 77th Division Headquarters as General A.D. Bruce arrived to hear the incredible story of Desmond Doss' valor on the Maeda Escarpment. Inspired by the heroic actions of the daring medic, General Bruce lost no time in drafting the paperwork to award him the greatest distinction a soldier could receive, the Medal of Distinction. However, fate intervened that evening, denying General Bruce the chance to meet the brave man in person. Desmond Doss, despite having completed his heroic task, felt the physical toll of the day's events. Exhausted and exhausted, he did his best to tidy up in the simplicity of his surroundings before retreating into solitude. Alone with his thoughts and his beloved Bible, Doss sought solace in prayer, his heart brimming with thankfulness for the wonderful occurrences that had occurred that day. In the deep silence of the night, he turned to the pages of scripture, seeking solace and strength in the words of faith that had led him through the darkest of times. As he knelt in prayer, Desmond Doss thanked God for his miraculous intervention, acknowledging that it was only through his grace and mercy that he had been able to accomplish what many had thought impossible. He pondered with humility and reverence on the lives he'd saved. And the sacrifices made by his fellow troops, praying for their safety and well-being in the face of conflict. Even while the world around him buzzed with the thrill of coming recognition and acclaim, Doss stayed steadfast in his faith, his gaze fixed on the source of his strength and courage. For him, the genuine reward was not trophies or plaudits, but knowing that he had served his fellow man with unyielding dedication and devotion to duty. In that calm moment of thought, Desmond Doss found serenity in the midst of war, his spirit lifted by the knowledge that he had answered the call of duty with courage, compassion, and steadfast faith. And as he rose from his prayers that night, he carried a deep sense of appreciation for the blessings placed upon him, as well as the opportunity to make a difference in others' lives. As he approached the opening of the enemy cave from which his fellow troops had been killed by gunfire, Doss exhibited unprecedented bravery and selflessness by making four successive journeys under intense fire to rescue the wounded. With each daring voyage into the heart of danger, he sacrificed everything to save his friends, personifying the true spirit of heroism in the face of adversity. In the heat of combat, among the deafening sound of gunfire and the acrid stink of smoke, Desmond Doss stood out as a dazzling example of courage and compassion, a living witness to the tenacious spirit of the human soul. And as the battles raged around him, his unflinching resolve stood firm, a light of hope and inspiration for all who witnessed his amazing deeds of courage. On that fateful day, May 5, 1945, the winds of battle changed dangerously against the American forces stationed on the island of Okinawa. As enemy artillery, mortars, and machine gun fire rained down on them, the men of Company B, 77th Infantry Division, found themselves trapped in the deadly crossfire, their numbers devastated by the fury of the enemy attack. Japanese soldiers, emboldened by the turmoil and confusion of battle, emerged from their concealed foxholes and caves to start a relentless assault on the exhausted American forces. In the blink of an eye, the battlefield was transformed into a scene of devastation and anarchy, with death and destruction lurking around every corner. The toll of war was rapid and cruel, 
with a storm of bullets and a deafening roar of gunshots. Seventy-five men were wounded, their cries of pain and sorrow booming over the battlefield as they tried to find shelter from the lethal assault. Forced to retire under persistent enemy fire, the remaining troops of Company B had no alternative but to fall back and regroup at the base of the Maeda escarpment. As they sought refuge from the fury of combat, their dreams for victory dimmed, their ranks thinned, and their spirits rocked by the sheer ferocity of the enemy's attack. Despite the chaos and uncertainty of the retreat, one man stood firm and unshakable in his resolve. Desmond T. Doss stood alone atop the cliff, surrounded by the wounded and enemy forces closing in on him, like a beacon of hope in the midst of despair. Despite the overwhelming odds against him, Doss refused to surrender his station and his companions. With courage and resolve, he remained steadfast in his commitment to duty, risking his own life to tend to the wounded and provide whatever comfort he could in the middle of conflict. As the conflict raged around him, Doss' actions revealed much about his character and his steadfast loyalty to his fellow soldiers. Despite immense suffering, he remained a brilliant example of courage and compassion, a true hero in every sense of the word. Even though the tide of battle had turned against them that day, Desmond T. Doss' spirit remained unbroken, a monument to the human spirit's endurance in the face of incredible pain and misfortune. Despite the unrelenting barrage of enemy fire and the thunderous bursts of shells bursting all around him, Desmond T. Doss persisted in his duty to care for the wounded. With courage and determination, he went amid his injured companions onto the escarpment, unaware of the deadly perils that surrounded him. Meanwhile, at the base of the cliff, the few soldiers who had managed to avoid the enemy attack could only watch helplessly as the sounds of war rang down from above. Their hearts filled with dread and panic as they listened to the cries of the wounded, their lives hanging in the balance. Then, as if by miracle, a wounded soldier emerged over the escarpment, hanging perilously from a rope. Slowly and slowly, he descended to the safety of the base below, guided by the steady hands of a towering medic on the summit. More wounded troops followed suit, each one lowered to safety thanks to Desmond Doss' unrelenting commitment. With each action, he put his own life in danger to ensure his colleague's survival, his selflessness a light of hope in the middle of battle pandemonium. Reports from that fateful day described the advancing Japanese forces, their rifles and bayonets ready to strike at any moment as they closed in on the lone medic standing on the cliff. Despite the oncoming danger, Doss maintained his task with unrelenting determination, transporting the wounded to safety even as the Germans approached. Despite tremendous odds, Desmond Doss stayed steadfast in his dedication to his fellow troops, his heroism and compassion shining brightly in the darkest of times. And, as the threat of danger became closer, he refused to waver, his unflinching resolution a monument to the human spirit's strength in the face of difficulty. Desmond T. Doss' noble deeds on the Maeda escarpment that tragic day made an unforgettable mark in military history. As he worked relentlessly to lower soldier after soldier to safety, he exemplified the very definition of courage and sacrifice, his unshakable dedication to his fellow soldiers standing as a light of hope amidst the chaos and carnage of wartime. For five painful hours, Doss worked tirelessly, his every thought absorbed by a single, ardent prayer, Lord, let me obtain one more. Just one more. Despite the constant threat of enemy fire and the persistent risk of being overpowered by advancing Japanese forces, he refused to succumb to fear or despair, his faith in a higher power seeing him through the darkest of times. The gravity of Doss' deeds was beyond comprehension. Only God really knows how many lives he spared that day. Nonetheless, in honor of his amazing bravery, the army recognized him with saving an astonishing 100 lives, demonstrating the steadfast tenacity and selflessness that distinguished his character. But, true to his humble nature, Doss couldn't believe such an astounding figure. Couldn't be, he said. It could not have been more than 50. I wouldn't have had enough time to save 100 men. So, in regard to Doss' modest estimate, the Medal of Honor citation was prepared with a compromise in mind, crediting him with saving 75 fellow troops. However, regardless of the exact number, the significance of Doss' actions on that fateful day cannot be emphasized. 
His heroic actions set a brilliant example of courage, compassion, and unshakable dedication to duty, a legacy that would last for centuries, encouraging many others to strive for greatness in the face of adversity. And, while the conflicts may have faded from memory and the wounds of war have healed, the memory of Desmond T. Doss' incredible heroism and altruism will live on as a monument to the eternal ability of the human spirit to overcome even the most formidable difficulties. As darkness set on the battlefield, a sense of wonder and adoration spread through the ranks of the 77th Division Headquarters as General A.D. Bruce arrived to hear the incredible story of Desmond Doss' valor on the Maeda Escarpment. Inspired by the heroic actions of the daring medic, General Bruce lost no time in drafting the paperwork to award him the greatest distinction a soldier could receive, the Medal of Distinction. However, fate intervened that evening, denying General Bruce the chance to meet the brave man in person. Desmond Doss, despite having completed his heroic task, felt the physical toll of the day's events. Exhausted and exhausted, he did his best to tidy up in the simplicity of his surroundings before retreating into solitude. Alone with his thoughts and his beloved Bible, Doss sought solace in prayer, his heart brimming with thankfulness for the wonderful occurrences that had occurred that day. In the deep silence of the night, he turned to the pages of scripture, seeking solace and strength in the words of faith that had led him through the darkest of times. As he knelt in prayer, Desmond Doss thanked God for his miraculous intervention, acknowledging that it was only through his grace and mercy that he had been able to accomplish what many had thought impossible. He pondered with humility and reverence on the lives he'd saved. And the sacrifices made by his fellow troops, praying for their safety and well-being in the face of conflict. Even while the world around him buzzed with the thrill of coming recognition and acclaim, Doss stayed steadfast in his faith, his gaze fixed on the source of his strength and courage. For him, the genuine reward was not trophies or plaudits, but knowing that he had served his fellow man with unyielding dedication and devotion to duty. In that calm moment of thought, Desmond Doss found serenity in the midst of war, his spirit lifted by the knowledge that he had answered the call of duty with courage, compassion, and steadfast faith. And as he rose from his prayers that night, he carried a deep sense of appreciation for the blessings placed upon him, as well as the opportunity to make a difference in others' lives. For Desmond Doss, the virtues of service, sacrifice, and selflessness were more than just words, they were concepts that guided his activities and shaped his legacy for future generations. I and the depths of that tunnel, as in other aspects of his life, he represented the genuine spirit of heroism, demonstrating once more that courage knows no bounds and that the power of compassion can conquer even the most formidable of obstacles. Desmond Doss's post-war existence was distinguished by a different type of battle, one fought within his own body rather than on the battlefield. During his duty in the Pacific, he got tuberculosis, which left him ravaged and disabled, with scarred lungs and delicate health. Despite the odds heaped against him, Doss stayed steadfast, his spirit intact even in the face of defeat. His tuberculosis was exacerbated by hearing impairments, which served as a daily reminder of the sacrifices he had made while serving his nation. Throughout it all, Doss found strength in the unflinching support of his beloved wife, Dorothy. Her devotion and dedication saw him through the darkest of days, and her steadfast presence provided comfort and solace in times of adversity and agony. Despite his own health challenges, Doss never stopped giving of himself, devoting his time and energy to helping others and preaching the message of hope and forgiveness. Whether speaking to large or small groups, he never passed up the opportunity to share his experience and inspire others with his everlasting faith and tenacious spirit. However, tragedy struck again when Dorothy was diagnosed with cancer in 1982. Despite surgery and a brief period of remission, Doss' health gradually deteriorated, throwing her into a deep abyss of sadness and despair. The morning of November 17, 1991, marked the end of Dorothy's suffering, but it also marked the start of a new chapter in Doss's life, one filled with sadness, loss, and great loneliness. Even in his darkest hour, Doss found comfort in his religion, believing in God's plan and purpose for his life. In the middle of his grief, God sent a ray of hope into Doss' life in the form of Francis, his new wife. 
Desmond and Francis set out on a new adventure together, united by their shared faith and passion to serve others, continuing the work they felt called to do while upholding Doss' legacy of love and service. Desmond Doss' death on March 23, 2006, signaled the end of an era, a life distinguished by courage, sacrifice, and unflinching faith. Nonetheless, his memory lives on as a source of hope and inspiration for all who aspire to make the world a better place through acts of kindness, compassion, and selflessness. We poured our hearts and souls into each frame, hoping to take you on a mesmerizing journey through time. We're glad to hear your opinions. Did you enjoy the video? Was it informative, interesting, or perhaps even inspirational? We would love to hear from you in the comments section below. And, if you haven't already, please consider joining our community by subscribing to our channel. And, if you haven't already, please consider joining our community by subscribing to our channel. By clicking the bell button, you'll be kept up to speed on all of our latest releases, ensuring that you never miss out on another intriguing journey into the past. But wait, there's more. We want to hear from you. Do you have a particular historical topic that piques your interest? Leave us a comment with your thoughts, and who knows? Your suggestion may be the inspiration for our next video. So, friends, when you say goodbye, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Your support means everything to us, and we can't wait to go on this historic trip alongside you. Until next time, be interested, stay connected, and continue to discover the treasures of our shared past. Cheers!